So the first thing I would like to ask everyone is that, can you think of any artificial intelligence applied in real life? Now, I, I think that um, most of you might have the sense that uh, there is something behind uh, the things you see. Maybe it's, um, it's something you see on your cell phone, it's something you see on the bus ad, or maybe it's something you see on the television. <clears throat> so uh, moreover, there's a lot of things you can think about uh, and suspect if it's using artificial intelligence. So the first and the most famous application I would like to introduce uh, is Google. So the Google uh, has a rich history in using artificial intelligence. And obviously, it's one of the largest companies in the world. And it's also uh, a company in the field of uh, information and technology. So you would assume that Google uses almost anything with AI. So if you think about it, when you're looking at Google right now, Google might be looking at you at the same time. So when you begin to type a search term on uh, the, Google's, uh, the Google search page, uh, actually, Google makes recommendations from for you to choose. Now, depending on how you speak or how you uh, write, type down the uh, the questions or the thing you want to search, Google will um, suggest different things to you. So, um, this is a, a, a this is thanks to Google has collected a lot of data. Uh, behind uh, everyone's search history. Now, when, when I talk about search history, I don't mean uh, the search history uh, that we usually can delete. These search histories can, uh, it's already uploaded when you click uh, the, the search button. So when you hit search uh, and you're looking for information, uh, probably uh, for the first time, uh, you see what you're looking for in the second page. So Google actually takes a note on that. So it will understand that uh, the thing you're searching is in the second page or maybe the second page kind of uh, the, uh, the, the, order, uh, the, the order two uh, in the second page. So if that information is collected, then uh, all the other uh, information about that uh, about that note would be uh, expanded. So when you type in something now, probably it will show up to the first page, uh, maybe after 10 or 100 trials. So by using artificial intelligence, Google will attempt to guess what you might trying to find. So the next, uh, Example I would like to introduce is Facebook. So uh, there's uh, obviously there's a lot of uh, pursuits uh, uh, in the, uh, the the law field for uh, Facebook right now, and people are really some of the people uh, worldwide are really angry at um, Facebook uh, getting people's information without they even knowing it. But I would say that uh, the reason why Facebook can and is doing this uh, would be uh, to the serving of uh, all human beings. So um, here, uh, the, the Facebook example would be uh, the face recognition. So it started to, uh, uh, Facebook started to have people <clears throat> gain the, the, the habit of uploading pictures in post messages to show more details of your story. So um, back then, uh, when there's not, when uh, Facebook doesn't exist, you might just um, post some messages, say, um, I took my dog on a walk today. And there's an, there are no pictures to support your story. So uh, probably people would think that you're just typing this in your home or you don't even have a dog. But when Facebook came, uh, you can post pictures uh, to your story. So it gives a, a realistic vibe and the actual um, interaction between human, between human beings. So uh, because Facebook does that innovation, um, many years ago, Facebook started to use artificial intelligence for face recognition. So 
uh, I believe when you upload a uh, a photo of you or your friends and uh, up to uh, Facebook right now, the algorithm should be able to detect you and your friend or probably your dog. I know that because um, when I'm when I'm using my iPhone right now, the uh, the, the the photo album actually suggests uh, that this person is me or maybe my girlfriend or my family. Uh, and I don't even need to tag them uh, by myself. They actually are already preset. So uh, obviously, uh, if you think about it, Facebook, uh, the software of Facebook, uh, obviously they know who you are, what you look like. It doesn't, um, it doesn't change if you have different angles uh, when you take the picture, even though you're taking it from the back, you're taking it even from the, uh, not, not the front, I believe Facebook is getting smarter at uh, detecting yourself. So this, of course, is thanks to billions after billions of user data. So when any person uploads an image, again, there will be information uploaded to uh, the Facebook server, and you would tag them uh, before. You would tag your face, um, tag your family, uh, and then... Uh, a few years later, after a, a wide and abundant learning, when you keep uploading the images, the server for uh, Facebook actually uh, can can change and it actually recognizes you and your family. So when we talk about uh, the hyper personalization uh, before, this is the uh, one of the most um, most visible and applicable, uh, applications you can see right now. So um, with this face recognition uh, technology, the name Facebook will continue at its rightful place. So uh, another thing I would like to talk about is the Facebook advertisement. So um, you can think about this. Uh, have you ever had this feeling that you're chatting with your friend about wanting to buy maybe a new car or new phone that just came out a week ago? So the next thing you know, the, the Facebook page shows advertisements of your nearest mobile phone store or your car dealership that's nearby uh, or the best price you can get on online shopping, et cetera, et cetera. So do you ever wonder why it is so quick and so precise, and it kind of shocks you if you think about it, because uh, first you can forget the fact that Facebook has more than a thousand ways to eavesdrop you without even knowing it, because the most important thing here is that these information about you are constantly collected, and you would not know what it can do. Well, you know by now that it can help you. Uh, Facebook advertise more uh, precisely, but um, even though you might not be using Facebook at the moment, you might still use Facebook accounts to log into some online games or shopping websites. So uh, do you see why uh, Facebook is so powerful when it comes to uh, advertising or even Google is good at it? Because we use that uh, account to log into something else. If you do that, well, obviously you wouldn't take a look at the terms and uh, the notices, but when you click login, that means you give permission to these companies that uh, the information you're using at that um, maybe shopping websites is allowed to be used in Facebook. So uh, without you knowing it, obviously, Facebook has uh, or Google has already uh, acquire a lot of different information about you. So that is where the magic begins. The Facebook is tremendously at good at collecting any information about you. And it actually seems that Facebook knows you very personally. So the next thing I would like to introduce is the Tesla company. So uh, uh, thanks to Elon Musk, we can uh, we can foresee the, the the car can can be driven by cars itself, and uh, though people are really scared about it uh, at the time being, so am I. But 
we can foresee at least uh, with assisted driving, uh, we can save some time and uh, be more safer uh, than just driving by ourselves. So if you're a Tesla fan like me, you should know that Tesla is best known for the, um, the auto driving features. And these auto driving features includes, uh, you can drive on the highway, you can do uh, par parallel parking, you can even park to your home. But if you take a look at the Tesla uh, website, you can see that they actually have more. They can, uh, you can see that they have uh, what we call the recall function. They can uh, drive itself to you. Uh, maybe you just came out from a hotel. It can drive to you, uh, to your location without even uh, you driving it. You can uh, pre-open your uh, air conditioner, obviously. So all these is a thanks to artificial intelligence. So what you might not know is that this car itself has eight surrounding cameras and shockingly 12 ultrasonic sensors around it. So uh, remember we talked about the, uh, the, the Google driverless pl uh, car plan. Uh, they have cameras and sensors as well. So um, when we're using uh, these uh, auto, uh, automotive uh, driverless programs, you will see that um, we use cameras and radars and sensors around the car uh, for assisting uh, the car itself. So this will allow the, the car to see up to uh, by, by definition, 250 meters of range. If you think about 250 meters, it's kind of really long because uh, if you see someone in, with your own eyes for uh, 250 meters, you might not see that person really clearly. But uh, with a powerful camera and powerful sensors, uh, basically the car sees further and better of uh, the surroundings than, than you are. So this car does not only help you drive because the, the camera and sensors can also detect any potential vandalizers while you're not in the car. So uh, there's a fun video, I, I believe uh, one or two years ago, that there is someone uh, who is, uh, maybe he, he's just uh, wanting, to, uh, wanting to try out this function. Um, he actually went out to a Tesla and uh, a few times and Tesla senses a, uh, a, a person uh, walking by this car very closely and it, it comes back and forth. And then uh, in the video, uh, the, 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 guy is, um, the guy is arrested uh, for not even trying to uh, vandalize the car because the car uh, actually alerts the, uh, the, the, the owner of the car that someone is near your car. And uh, before the... Uh, so to speak, a thief or the vandalizer, even known yet, the police have already came. So simply said, the Tesla allowed the car to, to, to see and think for itself. So let's take a look at the last example today. Um, I believe almost every one of you should have at least uh, one a Gmail account uh, from Google. Have you ever compared uh, Gmail to other email servers? So there's something really cool about uh, Gmail that um, Gmail actually uh, states that it can block up to 99.9% .9 of the spam email every day. So, um, well, if you think about it, if you're using the traditional uh, paper email, uh, sorry, paper mail uh, to, to this day, you will see that there's some advertisements or something that you don't really want to have in your mailbox. But if you use uh, Gmail or Google Mail, it actually uh, directs those emails to uh, the category spam. And it's tricky because uh, some of the information might just be the one that you need because uh, spam emails and regular emails uh, can be recognized by the, um, the, the names and the contents of the email itself. So uh, the tricky part would be the artificial intelligence have to know that this is not a spam or this is a spam. If you're buying something online, uh, usually you would have a shopping receipt. And when it 
sends to your uh, mailbox, usually if it's not a smart uh, decision made by the artificial intelligence or not even made by a, a artificial intelligence, it would be recognized as spam. But in general, it's in reality is actually a important email that you cannot lose. So uh, Gmail has uh, provided us with a more sp smarter uh, application when you use Gmail. So actually along with other famous applications that Google develops, Google, Gmail has been using artificial intelligence uh, since I believe day one because over 1 billion users in demand, uh, the spam blocking system that they developed was a long-term goal to achieve. So um, have you thought of anything that might involve artificial intelligence in your life? Um, try to think about it during your free time. So I have a hint for you. Uh, the, the hint is called Netflix. So now that's put our minds into the industrial world. There was a phrase that has been around for 20 years, which is called the industry 4.0. So please take a minute and think about this phrase or even uh, do a quick research on it. What does this mean of industry 4.0? So um, back in the early 18th century, uh, the, the world began uh, by uh, the, the, the world began to uh, develop its first industrial revolution. So I believe uh, we all heard the story of the steam engine and the cars were, were, were there, the, the cars were appearing uh, on the roads. We use this cars instead of riding horses. And that is the first era of industry 1.0. But back in the day, uh, of 18th century, they don't even call it the uh, the industry 1.0. This phrase was actually dubbed, uh, I believe, uh, probably only 50 years ago. So uh, during the industry 1.0, uh, the machines have uh, has have been trying to assist humans in all possible ways. And uh, by, back then, uh, electricity wasn't the, the, the first selection for power. Actually, it's uh, steam and water power. And we use coals to create steams and firepower to, uh, to drive uh, our machines for like trains or like cars. So we use this electrical powers more in what we call the era of industry 2.0 where um, production lines are getting more advanced and uh, a lot of assembly lines in particular have, using, have been using electrical powers in general. So uh, electrical powers has, uh, has been around uh, for many years from now, obviously, but uh, it was not the first, uh, rev in the, re the first revolution in the industry. So I'm going to skip a ahead to uh, the phrase industry 4.0. As you can see, um, the fourth industry revolution is right now. And if you think about it and you see it on the screen that it says the smart factory, the automotive system, and most importantly, the machine learning. So by the year 2000, the phrase 4.0 appeared. We are facing more massive data structure and it led us to grow into the machine learning category. So uh, that's the back to the industry 3.0. As we said before, the reason why industry 4.0 can be developed is because um, in industry 3.0, there was a lot of different devices. The variety of the devices have been um, really wide and uh, factories around the world have been using a lot of different things to assist the, the production line. And uh, there is a early sign of using the IT, uh, the, the IT system and the early signs of using the uh, robotics. So I believe the first robot was, uh, was deployed into a car factory in the United States in the 60s. So, uh, starting from that time to now, a lot of countries have already starting to use robots 
to assist in their manufacturing process. So when you use robots, you would think that, hey, robots are really cool. And uh, in industries, they are just robotic arms. But uh, back in the days, the robotic arm was actually really advanced and they're not at all easy to program. So when it comes to programming uh, in the industry 3.0 phase, it's a it's more of a complex uh, and high tech uh, topic to 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 uh, to discuss or to deploy into your uh, factory. So uh, for the factories that actually has that capability of um, human resource or uh, or the budget to even buy a robot, so. These uh, leading companies would be uh, one of the uh, leading parts of becoming uh, what we say the, the pioneers of Industry 4.0. So uh, when it comes to complex uh, devices like robots, you would see a lot of different information already uh, ready and it has sensors, it has different uh, aspects of information that it can, uh, it can, you can extract and become a huge database for uh, machine learning. So back to industry 4.0, the machine learning can be a, um, a result of uh, applying more advanced devices during the industry 3.0 phase. So that is where the artificial intelligence can be useful because uh, when we're trying to manage the, a one, uh, one factory with a lot of human beings, then you will need a human director or a management team to, uh, to guide and train and assist uh, all these workers. But when you're having a whole factory full of robots and uh, machines that doesn't talk to you, that doesn't speak English, doesn't speak Chinese, and nothing. It speaks with um, with, with languages like robotic language. So uh, when when this happens, we would need artificial intelligence uh, to extract data quickly and deploy, react to any um, anything that might happen uh, during your production hours. So how is artificial intelligence used in uh, industries like manufacturing fields? So you can take a look at this photo. Um, obviously you see a lot of bottles. At, this photo is taken in uh, one of the uh, sesame oil factories. And you can see that there are two re uh, green boxes, uh, green bounding boxes on the on the image this is a capture of the of the uh the, the camera that inspects the production line so do you see one of the de defective bottles so uh the defective bottle should be at the at at the center over here so there we go and traditionally we hire people to point out the defects of certain products what we call the inspectors and obviously, uh, the the manufacturers all are are really relying on the inspectors to uh, to gain uh, their productivity and their product uh, quality. Uh, because uh, if you're making maybe a, a thousand uh, iPhones in one hour, you need a person to check and run randomly check your. Uh, your batches of products before it was deployed uh, and, and and shipped out to our uh, our retail stores. So soon we find that the inspectors, however, uh, however experienced they are, still has their limits because uh, we're humans. So when we are hired, we're hired as humans. We cannot do one job uh, continuously for let's say 10 hours a day. We can, but it will, it, you might not be able to work tomorrow. But um, uh, even so, uh, we have uh, what we call a decay and stamina decay uh, for human beings. So the restrictions of human beings are really obvious because we, as humans, we have, um, we have personalities, 
uh, we can uh, we sometimes get sick and we sometimes just don't feel like going to work. And these things would help decrease the productivity and the quality and the consistency of your um, factory management. So uh, obviously, uh, if you want to have a uh, a solution for that to uh, to inspect uh, whatever you're producing, uh, you would start to use some devices. Okay, so um, the key application here would be that manufacturers uses automated um, visual inspection tools to uh, search for defects uh, on the from the production lines. And the visual inspection equipment, such as let's say the uh, machine vision cameras is capable of defecting, in inspecting the defect faults and uh, more quickly than accurately than the human eye. And second thing is that uh, there can be a lot of risk prediction and inventory management. So uh, we're talking about the uh, inspectors before, but if you use the AI system, basically in the uh, factory management system, we will see that it can help you assess uh, what inventory is missing or is getting uh, lower. You need to ask the vendors to buy more. Uh, you need to buy more um, tools or materials from that particular vendor. And if it's more advanced, you can actually see that uh, the artificial intelligence will also help you assess how much time it needs to be shipped to your factory and that how that would affect your production line. Okay, so it might decay some time uh, for the production uh, batch. So for uh, the third part, I would say that uh, machines obviously run, runs on electricity and power and humans runs on, let's say emotions and food. So uh, if you're just giving out the, power, the electrical power, the, uh, the machines will work for you 24 seven. And I believe this is so obvious. I, I don't even know how to explain this, but um, there are a lot of 24 seven factories for many years. And the artificial intelligence is actually just one of the great teammates that will employ, uh, deploy into uh, this 24 seven team. So here you have it. These are some of the exciting histories and examples and introductions of artificial intelligence. In the next chapter, uh, we'll take a look at what is AI combined with AOI.